Hey. I'm going to chat right now with uh, Kat Calvin. Once again, she's giving and us a crash course when it comes to, to voting, prep you guys for the polls. So Kat Calvin, once again, um, is a part of spreadthevote.org. She also has a great site called readtheeffingdirections.com or org. <laughs> I'll let you tell them about it, Kat. <laughs> Um, yeah, so hi everyone. I, so we have a very big problem in this country that people do not fill out absentee ballots correctly and they get thrown out um, by the hundreds of thousands. And in fact, black and brown people are two times more likely to have their ballots thrown out and young people are five times more likely to have their ballots thrown out. So to make it easier to know exactly what you need to do step by step in order to get your ballot counted because it's all filled out correctly we set up read the effing directions.com you can go on there we've got simple directions for all 50 states we've also got some really funny videos that you could send to your friends especially the ones who maybe never read the directions before they put together their ikea furniture or something and tell them read the effing directions because if you don't your ballot will not count yeah so I think it's really important for people to have that breakdown, like what, which offices should they be paying attention to when they're voting locally? Because if you're in favor of police reform, there is power there. It's not the only answer, right? But there's power in voting for those offices. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one thing that's important to, to think about when you think about voting and how it uh, relates to criminal justice reform is that it is not the only movement, but it is a part of the movement, right? Mm -hmm. You can't, you have to do a lot of things. We have to march and we have to show up at police office, uh, police commission meetings, and we have to call our congressmen and all of this. But once a year, sometimes twice a year or every other year, depending on where you live, you have to vote. We live in a representative democracy and voting is your chance to get rid of people you don't like. It's your chance to keep people you do like. It's your chance to find people who you think would be great and say, hey, you should run for office. We need you on city council. It's critical. It is. It is what we are when we are fighting for new legislation or we're fighting to stop police brutality or whatever else. The people who are in office, they matter, and we have the power to kick them out, and we have the power to find new people. And so, voting is absolutely critical. Uh, so, I'm going to walk through a few of the offices that it's really important to know, um, because they both are critical to the criminal justice system. Um, and probably some, most or many of them are on your ballot right now. Uh, so if we go sort of from bottom to top, if you are in a town where you don't like your police chief, probably most of us, uh, your police chief in almost every city is appointed by the mayor. So if your mayor is up for election, I live in LA, 2022 will be a big year for us. We get to vote for a new mayor, thank God. Mm -hmm. uh, we get, we, you know, you wanna look at what your mayor says about not just criminal justice and the police, but when they talk about the city budget, right? How much of the city budget are they allocating towards police? Um, when they talk about the mayor also appoints the police commission, which is like the committee that, they don't really govern the police, but they they're, they're, they help with that along with many other offices. Um, and so you want to really think about who the mayor is and who's running and what they're saying, because they're the ones who are going to determine who the police chief is. Uh, same thing, your city council probably has to approve the city budget. And so it's really important to hear what your city council members think about uh, criminal justice, because they're the ones who will approve if your mayor, you know, uh, allocates a massive amount of money towards the police, they will either approve that or they may deny that and say, you need to cut this down or we need to have more you know, community policing and mental health services or whatever. Your city council will have a lot to do with that. Uh, in most areas, in a lot of areas, you have a sheriff. Sheriffs are actually directly elected. So you can actually just see who's running and what they have to say for themselves and what their record is uh, because you can actually vote for the sheriff. Uh, then, you know, we can talk about district attorneys. So the district attorney is the person who decides who gets charged for a crime. So, for instance, let's say two white men shoot a black man in the back because he happens to go jogging. It's the district attorney who will decide whether or not they even get charged. In fact, we had a situation like that and it took the district attorney a very long to decide to charge them. It took a lot of public pressure and she ended up having to recuse herself. By the way, she's also up for re-election here. So it's really important to know who your DA is um, and to elect someone who aligns with your values because they decide 
if they're going to choose to, uh, you know, prosecute uh, black people for drug crimes and not white people with equal drug crimes, et cetera. Like your DA is very, very, very important. Uh, you also want to look, if we're looking at statewide, who's your attorney general? Your attorney general, you know, so we learned this in Minnesota recently because uh, we had a police chief and local governance that did not want to prosecute the police in the George Floyd case. And Keith Ellison, who's the attorney general, was brought in by the governor. And the, and the, the attorney general has the power because they're sort of the state's lawyer, right? And so they can decide to prosecute police. But also, if you have, say, a corrupt governor or a secretary of state or a political official, the AG is the one who prosecutes them. And so in most states, the attorney general is elected. They may also be appointed by the governor. So if you live in a state where the AG is appointed by the governor, then you want to pay attention to what the governor says about criminal justice reform. Your governor is also in charge of the Department of Corrections for your state. So if you think that's important, then you want to vote for a governor who aligns with your values. Maybe, you know, we have some governors who campaign on building more jails. Maybe that's not your guy, right? Um, you want to really pay attention to that. There are also some other uh, offices, that, like, for instance, your county board of supervisors. They're really important. I live in Los Angeles County. It is the biggest county in the country. It's actually the sixth largest economy in the world. And it is run by five people who have nobody over them except for the voters. They run, it's something like a $35 billion budget. It's a massive budget, it's run by five people. They have a lot of power when it comes to uh, people experiencing homelessness across LA, which we have the biggest problem in the country, when it comes to detention, when it comes to county jails, all sorts of things. So your board of supervisors is really important too. So, uh, and then lastly, this is the toughest one, judges. <laughs> there are a lot of judges. Um, depending on the level of judge and the state, they are either appointed by your governor or they're elected. And it really depends. In some states, you have a state Supreme Court that is elected. In some states, you have a state Supreme Court that is appointed. Um, so you have to pay attention to that. But I guarantee you, in almost every state, you're going to have judges on your ballot. Now, judges are actually, they can be really tough to research because they don't have to have websites. They don't usually campaign. A lot of times the decisions they make are, are secret. Um, and so, you know, this is where we get to the research part for both judges and everything else. You really want to find good election guides. Uh, so for instance, spread the vote at spreadthevote.org slash 2020 guides. We make guides for all 12 of the states in which we operate, including Texas, Florida, Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, all kinds of states uh, where we, will give you nonpartisan objective information about uh, everything that's on your ballot. But we're by far not the only ones. There are amazing community organizations that put out voter guides. Uh, there are nonpartisan things. I love ballotready.org because you can go on, you can put in your address, everything that's on your ballot will pop up. It's also nonpartisan. Um, and they'll give you information and links, things like that. Uh, you know, also think about what organizations that you trust um, or that align with your values, I um, may have uh, either candidates they've endorsed, voter guides, ballot measures that they've endorsed. I'm um, so, for instance, you know, Planned Parenthood or Moms Demand or the NRA or the Sierra Club. They'll all put out election information. And, you know, Sierra Club will say we're endorsing this candidate because you know she really cares about the environment. And so, if that's what you care about, then you want to follow them. One thing that I also always do is I look up the candidates on social media because <laughs> candidates are very honest. Uh, when I was voting this year, there was a water reclamation board. I live in the desert. Water is very important here. I have zero idea what the water reclamation board does or I, before I voted. Didn't even know it was on my ballot. None of these people had websites, but I looked them up on Twitter and one of the guys extremely comfortable being very racist on Twitter. So I was like, well, I don't want you in charge of my water. <laughs> Whatever this job is, I don't want you to have it. And you know, the reality is, as we've all seen at all levels of government, most politicians are pretty honest on social media and you can see what issues they care about. You can see how they react to things. Um, you know, most politicians, and when you get to very local offices, uh, they may not, but they usually have websites where they'll say what their platform is. And a platform is just what they believe on certain issues. This is where I stand on education or on healthcare or you know climate change or whatever. So you wanna look at that. 
Um, and then look at outside sources. Your local paper will endorse candidates. And whether or not you agree with them, they'll tell you why. So if they say, I'm endorsing this judge because he puts a lot of black people in jail, you could be like, that is not the judge for me, right? Um, so there are a lot of different resources that you can look into. Um, the last thing that I will, will, I will say is uh, a lot of states... California is the king of this. We have something called ballot measures. Ballot measures are a nightmare. First of all, ballot measures most of the time are asking voters to vote about things we know nothing about. I had to vote both on stem cell research and on dialysis. You know what I know nothing about? Stem cells are dialysis. And yet, I keep having to vote about these things. Um, mm -hmm. But they're also where you get to vote for a lot of really great things, right? Like, I got to vote to end cash bail. I got to vote to allow uh, returning citizens with felony convictions to be able to vote while they're on probation, right? So ballot measures are just issues that are put on your ballot. How this works depends on your state. In California, as long as you have enough money, you can put something on a ballot. Um, you know, when you look at Florida um, and Amendment 4 in 2018, uh, that I... Uh, temporarily reenfranchised returning citizens in Florida until the state legislature decided the voters don't matter. Uh, that was a ballot measure to amend the Constitution, right? So it's really important to pay attention to those things, to look them up, again, to see who's endorsing them, to look for voter guides, because, you know, if you see ballot measures and they're really wordy and they can be really tough to understand, um, but if you ignore it, you may miss your chance to vote to end cash bail. So those are important. The other thing that's amazing about ballot measures is that you can put one on the ballot. So if you live in a city or a county or a state where they, I'll keep the cash bail example, where they still have cash bail and you don't want that, you can get a community group together, you can get petitions signed, you can raise money, and you can put ballot measures on the ballot that can change laws for the whole state. Uh, so you know, I think that it's really important to remember that not only do we have the power to vote for things, but we also have the power to decide what's on the ballot, to decide who's on the ballot. If we hate, how often are we just voting for the least racist person? That's like half of my ballot this year. Well, the next year, find someone who you think would be incredible in city council or as mayor or whatever, and say, hey, I think you should run. And then the important second half of that sentence is, and I will help you, right? Like, I think you should run, and I'll help you get the signatures to get on the ballot, and I'll help you raise money, right? It's always harder for us to raise money. It's always harder for us to get attention. Um, but you can do it, uh, and you can, you know, you can make the difference so that when you're voting again two years from now, the ballot is full of people who are so great that the decision isn't, I hate all these people, I have to choose one. But the decision is, all of these people are so incredible and align with my values so much that I get to choose someone really amazing. And that's where we want to get to, but we have to do that because the people in power are never going to. That's real. Crash course. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know what? Before we, before we wrap, I do want you to cover one more thing. And thanks for all those links. I dropped them in the chat, guys, so you can access them there. Um, just about every website that Kat mentioned mail-in ballots though and and thankfully you let me know that we are amongst the community that um tends to have ours thrown out and so i want to know what do we need to keep our eyes on to make sure that our votes are counted well first of all sign the back of the freaking envelope please <laughs> the number of people who turn in a ballot and don't sign the back of the envelope is insane sign the back wow. um you also you want to know does your state require witness signatures? So we just had a major breakthrough in North Carolina today, actually, because North Carolina requires a witness to sign the back of the envelope. It could be a friend or a family, family member, but someone who said, who's signing saying, yeah, I watched them fill this out. It really was them. Well, we had a problem where we were seeing a higher percentage of Black voters' ballots get thrown out than ever before. This year, they've been voting in North Carolina for about a month because there weren't any signatures on the back. Uh, and North Carolina just made a really incredible decision where they're actually sending new ballots to everyone who didn't have a signature on the back so that they can- Oh, wow, vote. that's amazing. <laughs> I can't, I still kind of can't believe that happens. I can't believe yeah. that happens. But it's huge. But the thing is, please do not count on your state government like deciding to do some like miraculously generous thing. The other thing is in a lot of states like Wisconsin, you have to include a copy of your ID either in your absentee ballot request form or your absentee ballot depending on the state. 
So that means, first of all, you have to have ID. The whole reason I run an organization that helps people get IDs is because over 21 million eligible voters don't have ID, but you need them to vote in 36 states. So if you don't have ID, look, the election is in a week and a half. We will do our best to help you. Go to spreadthevote.org slash vote. Uh, we get IDs all year long, so we'll help you get an ID, but uh, we're coming up close. So get to the DMV tomorrow if you can. Um, but you know, even if you have one, you who, are the, who owns a printer? No one's owned a printer for 15 years. So find like your mom or your aunt with a home business or something and say like, look, can you please help me? I've got to print my ID. But you got to be prepared for that. In some states, you have to notarize your ID. No one even knows what a notary is. It's a person who is authorized by the government to uh, basically be sort of a legal government witness, right? So they'll watch you sign important documents and then stamp it just as a, a, a sort of legal mark that you are the person who did that. So when you're signing important contracts or, or court documents and things, you may have to get them notarized. Well, some states require a notarization in order to turn in your absentee ballot. It's ridiculous. It shouldn't be required, but it is. But you can go to the UPS store in almost any state, and it's usually around 6 to $10 to get That's a notarization. Okay. Is that voter suppression? Yes, it is. Do you have to do it? Yes, you do. You know, so that's why we set up Read the Effing Directions because there's so many different things. You know, right now we're about a week and a half away from the election. If you haven't mailed in your ballot yet, turn it in in person. Your state may have ballot boxes. Uh, your state may allow you to drop off ID uh, your ballot um, at a polling place or your state may let you take it to a county clerk. Um, but you wanna drop it off in person and not through USPS at this point because we're so late in the game. And you know how Americans are, we do everything last minute. So half a trillion people are about to mail in their mail-in ballots. And your ballot, depending on what state you're in, it either has to be postmarked by or arrive by a certain time. And in a lot of states, it may have to arrive by 5 p.m. on election day, which means that if the mail doesn't deliver your ballot till 8 p.m. on election day, they're not going to count it. So mm -hmm. these are all the rules you have to know for your state. It sucks. Voting is way too hard in this country. Believe me, I know, but it's the way it is. And the reason they make it this hard is because it makes us give up. So don't give up. Read the effing directions. <laughs> fill in your ballot correctly. Sign the back of the damn envelope and turn in your ballot. Yeah, and, and all those rules that she mentioned are on that website, readtheeffingdirections.com. Um, so one thing I want to thank you so much, Kat, and you, um, you also have a podcast, right? Sharing more yeah, information. So, um, I have a podcast with the CEO of vote.org, Andrea Haley. It's called vote the podcast. Um, and every week we give you news. In fact, on tomorrow's episode, there will be news about the new rule in North Carolina. Look, we're giving you news on what's happening, what the rule changes are, answering questions. Um, so you can uh, I'm Kat Calvin LA on Instagram. You can DM me, DM me with voting questions, but we're trying to keep, keep people updated. This is a very confusing year for voting. Um, so we're trying to do our best to make sure people know what's going on. Yeah. And I, I just want to share with everybody, like, because I know some people after hearing all of this stuff and I'll bring everybody on screen now, after hearing all this stuff, it might be a little discouraging, you know, when you understand the imbalance of power with, with cops. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to remember the, the tail end of this conversation where we spoke about, you know, Kat filled us in on who makes the decisions. Because I think a great example of someone who was in office that uh, clearly believes in the police accountability was Keisha Lance Bottoms, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. The situation with Tanaya Young and Messiah Pilgrim, the students from Spelman and Morehouse that were tased and pulled from their car. Less than 24 hours later, uh, and once again, Kat mentioned the mayor hires the chief or appoints the chief um, office, the chief police, chief of police. Uh, she fired those two cops. So that's a great example of a kind of, of someone who believes in accountability, someone that was like voted in and it was a win. And then you have the other end, as you mentioned, Ahmad Arbery, the district attorney. So there's a little bit of power there and we just want you to feel empowered.